Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to NIA Wales Home School. I am Raila Firdosi, Assistant Teacher, Day Shift. Today we are going to have a class with the student of class 7. Our today's subject is Agriculture Studies. Today, uh, today's our topic is Chapter 5. Today we will read from lesson 8 to 12. And this is our annual term session. Our today's lecture number 10 and HW number is 8. My dear students, after completing the class, you will submit HW from Chapter 5, lesson 8 to 12. NCQ. This is HW number 8. Okay, now let's start our lesson. Uh, we were in the chapter Agricultural Production. Today we will read from lesson 8 Cultivation Process of Climbing Fish that is koi. Climbing fish is a delicious fish. It is very popular among the people of Bangladesh. Climbing fish is found in different water reservoirs like haur, canal, bills, and ditches. The species which is cultivated in Bangladesh has been imported from Thailand. High climbing fish is first growing than the local species. Like other fishes, climbing fish inhales oxygen in water through its gill. But when it comes up from water, it can survive in an adverse situation by taking oxygen through its special organ lying under its skin. Climbing fish cultivation is profitable nowadays. Importance of climbing fish cultivation. This fish is delicious and nutritious. There is a great need of climbing fish in the market and the market price is also very high. It can be cultivated in a less deep pond and very densely. By cultivating this fish, it is possible to fulfill the needs of the animal protein in our family. Characteristics of a cultivable pond. The pond should be in an open area. It will be good if the pond is in silt, loam or clay loam soil. The pond should be with strong and clean bags and it should be in a flood area area. The pond should have the water retention capacity for at least 5 to 6 months. My uh, dear students, this para is very much important for your MCQ. So, you should underline the full para. Now, see, preparing the pond for cultivation. For cultivating uh, climbing fish in the pond, the following steps should be taken. Bank repair. In case of broken condition, the banks of the pond must be repaired properly. To ensure adequate light in the pond, the branches and boughs of the big trees on the banks should be shortened. Control of aquatic weeds. Aquatic weeds should be cleaned from the pond to make sure that enough sunlight falls on the pond. Besides, weeds free from which free ponds helps producing natural feed for fishes in the pond. Removal of predatory and unwanted fishes. Predatory and unwanted fishes must be removed from the pond because the predatory fish eats up the young fishes and the unwanted fish finishes the food for the climbing fish. These fishes can be removed from the pond by hauling net repeatedly or by drying up the pond or by using 20 to 30 grams rotenol for every decimal of the pond. Application of lime. Lime removes acidity from the water and soil. Lime also eradicates the turbidity of water and helps climbing fish prevent its diseases. Prevent its diseases. So 1 to 2 kg lime should be used for every decimal of the pond. Application of fertilizer. Cultivation of climbing fish largely depends on supplementary feed. 7 days after using lime in the pond, 100 gram urea and 50 gram TSP should be dosed in water for each decimal area should be applied in sunlight. Release of climbing fish fry. Slanting to one side, climbing fish is capable of moving from one place to another by using its fin to walk. For this, all the sides of the pond should be enclosed by nylon net before the release of climbing fish fry. The young fishes should be carried cautiously to prevent injuries to them. Before releasing them to the pond, it should be ensured that the fry gets adjusted to the pond water. 400 to 500 young fishes can be stocked up in every decimal area of the pond. In such a stocking density, prepared fish need must be feed must be provided. Feeding system: fish meal, mustard oil cake, rice bran, and wheat bran are dosed in water, and from this mixture, balls are made as a food for climbing fish, and then these balls are dropped in some specific places of the pond. Besides. Commercially produced fish ca feed can be collected from the market and given to the climbing fishes. Food should be supplied daily at the rate of 5% to 10% of the body weight of a fish. The food should be divided into two halves daily, 
one half should be given in the morning and the other in the afternoon. Now come lesson 9 control of diseases in climbing fish. Control of diseases among fishes means preventing and remedial steps taken against the disease. Preventive measures are taken before being infected and re remedial steps are adopted after being affected. In the case of climbing fish, importance must be given on the prevention than treatment. Climbing fish is vulnerable mainly to bacterial and paras parasitic diseases. But for the great stocking density of fishes and nutritional deficiency in food, fishes can be affected by the diseases caused by malnutrition. The steps to prevent disease among climbing fishes are mentioned below. Number one, there should be net hauling at least once in a month. Number two, fish feed enriched in nutrition should be supplied in accordance with the average weight of the fish. Number three, water must be changed if the water gets deep green color or gets polluted. Four, if a red layer is seen on water, bleaching powder at 50 grams per decimal should be applied. Five, in the pond of climbing fish, a lot of plankton is created and it pollutes the pond water. To control plankton, 12 tilapia and 4 silver curve in every decimal area can be released. 6. If there is any scarcity of oxygen in the pond, steps should be taken for the arrangement of bamboo beating and swimming. Number 7. To prevent diseases, 0.5 to 1 kg lime or 200 to 250 gram zeolites for each decimal area should be applied for 1 meter of deep water at the beginning of winter. Besides, 250 gram salt per decimal can be applied in every 2 months. Then if climbing fish is infected by any disease, the following remedial steps should be taken. Number 1. If the fish is affected by bacterial disease or fins rot disease, 6 to 8 gram copper sulfate per decimal area should be applied. Number 2. If the fish is infested with loaves for 30 cm depth of water, 3 to 6 gram dipterex for every 100 once a week should be applied 3 times successively. Number 3. If the fish is affected by ulcerated disease, copper sulfate treatment along with the 7 days use of oxytetracycline at a ratio of 3 to 5 gram per kg feet can control that disease. In addition, 0.5 kg to 1 kg edible salt can be applied for 30 cm depth of water for every 100 decimal. Lesson 10. Rearing process of poultry. You must have observed how poultry is reared in the villages. In rural Bangladesh, fowls are reared in a fully open or free state. But in commercial farms, poultry is reared in a confined state. Besides this, some people raise chickens in a paint area. Poultry rearing processes are discussed below. Poultry rearing in open or free process. In this process, chickens are raised in a fully open or free state. This process is very easy and popular for rearing small number of chickens. In rural areas of Bangladesh, poultry is reared at homes in this process. Chicken roams around the home states whole day long to collect its own food. Leftover food at homes is also given to them. They return to their houses in the evening. It does not cost much for their abode. Expenditure in poultry rearing is merge as it does not require any feed and laborer. This process is not applied to rare chickens on commercial basis. Raising local chickens in this process is profitable. Now come page 97, uh, 93. Here you can see two figures. Uh, figure number 5.17 that is poultry rearing at home in an open process and 5.818 that is poultry rearing in half confined process. Okay, now see poultry rearing in half confined process. In this process, there is a specific pen for the chickens. A wide area around the pen is surrounded by a wall or fence. It is called run. Throughout the day, chickens go about this area. They take shelter in that pen during rain and storm. Besides this, they stay in that pen at night. As they are confined to a restricted area, they do not get ad adequate wa food and water. So they should be supplied with food and water. Because of supplying food, the production cost gets higher in this process. In a half confined process, the high quality chicken breed variety of Faumi 
australorp or road island rate are better to be reared instead of hybrid forms okay you should underline the varieties now see here is another picture for poultry rearing on the floor in a confined process then poultry rearing in cages in a confined process now poultry rearing in confined process in this process many chickens are reared in a totally confined state in a house the pen built in this process is suitable for fowl raising this is called chicken farm generally in the confined process chickens are reared on the floor apart from this many a people raise chickens in cages too when the floor of the pen gets damp chick chicks can be nurtured in a bamboo made platform in commercial poultry rearing this process has become a standard in this process chickens are supplied with food and water because of this the management cost is higher and the profit is also higher in this process hybrid layer broiler and layer hybrid chicks are reared in confined process in this process a large number of fowls can be reared together in a small area so you should know the varieties which are uh, produced in confined process now let's see lesson 11 poultry feed and water management poultry feed management is an important factor in chicken rearing in home states chickens live on waste on the waste fallen crops insects vegetables etc in an open or free process of poultry rearing so they do not get adequate and balanced feed the desired number of eggs and amount of chicken meat will not be in hand if balanced feed is not ensured when nurturing hybrid chickens at home states 70% of the total poultry rearing cost is spent on poultry feed chickens drink a lot of water so poultry feed and water management is important in a poultry farm nutrition of poultry and food ingredients the essential nutrients for poultry are sugar protein fat mineral salts vitamin and water the necessary nutrients for poultry are present in a balanced feed different food ingredients that the source of nutrients for poultry are given below here you can see the cereal here is the nutrients and the food ingredients uh, number 1 carbohydrate which we can get from wheat maize rice gra grains rice bran wheat bran etc number 2 protein which we can get from dry fish powder soybean meal sea sim oil cake mustard oil cake etc then number 3 fat we can get from soybean oil mustard oil sea sim oil etc number 4 mineral common salt bone powder western snail powder vitamin mineral mix number 5 vitamin vegetables vitamin mix etc number 6 water pure water from tube oil or well now poultry ration three types of commercial poultry feed is available in the market layer chicks ration broiler grower ration and finisher ration are available so you should underline the names of three types of rations so rations should be prepared or bought from the market to feed fowls according to their age and purpose preparation of poultry ration a balanced poultry ration is prepared by granular food ingredients about 45 to 50% wheat and maize split 15 to 20% rice and wheat grains 10 to 15% soybean meal and sesame oil cake 6 to 10% dried fish powder 2 to 6% bone powder or western snail powder are used in ration preparation besides this common salt and vitamin mix should be added to the ration after preparing ration food ingredients should be mixed properly following is the sample ration preparation for the layers here is the serial number and here is the food ingredients and here is the percentage number 1 wheat and maize grains 47% 2 rice and wheat bran 16% 3 soybean meal 10% 4 sesame oil cake 10% 5 dry fish powder 10% 6 western snail powder 6% 7 common salt 0.5% 8 vitamin mineral mix 0.5% total 100% now see supply of food water food and water each chick consumes 10 to 15 g food daily amount of food supply must be increased as the chicks grow a fowl consumes 100 to 120 g food daily and it should be supplied with 200 g uh, 200 ml jar free pure water feed pot and water pot must be used after cleaning every day now see lesson 12 management of poultry disease birds as like as human beings suffer from various diseases too 
non-conformity with the normal health factors of human beings and birds and animals is called disease. An unnatural symptom in a body is considered as the manifestation of a disease. Disease management means prevention, identification and medication of this disease. Primarily, infected chickens can be identified by observing the external symptoms. The symptoms of a chick chicken are given below. Number one, a sick chicken, a sick chicken gets separated from the flock. Number two, it doses sitting on the ground. Number three, food or water intake de decreases or stops. Number four, feathers of the chicken look messy. Number five, abnormal defecation. Birds are infected by diseases for various reasons. Main cause of the disease is germs. Viral and bacterial diseases of fowls are very critical. There is no treatment for viral diseases. So if the disease breaks out, the poultry cannot be saved. Besides this, parasite disease causes great harm to the chickens. To prevent viral and bacterial diseases, fowls should be vaccinated regularly. The chickens in the farm or, or home state should be vaccinated at a time. Number one, a few names of diseases are given below. Number one, viral disease, Rani Khet, Gumboro bird flu, etc. Gumboro bird flu, etc. Number two, bacterial disease, foul cholera, foul typhoid, pulorum, tuberculosis, botulism, etc. Okay, we have to know the name very well. Number three, parasite disease. Two types of parasites are seen both inside and outside of the body of the chickens. Outside body parasites like laws, actually, and mite develops under the feathers. Chickens are mostly attacked inside their body by the parasites like round worm and tape worm. Okay, you have to know the insect's name very well. These worms take a share in the nutritious food of the chickens. Many worms suck blood from the body of the chickens. Besides, chickens suffer from blood dysentery quite often. Okay, they suffer from blood dysentery very often. Protozoa is the cause of this disease. Domestic animals stay in the farm house for a long time. If they are infected by diseases, they can be cured by giving treatment and brought back to production again. But this is not possible in a commercial poultry farm. So the following steps should be taken to prevent diseases in the poultry farm. Number one, pain and adjacent areas should be kept clean. Two, predatory birds or animals should be buried from entry to the farm. Number three, vaccination should be given timely. Four, chickens should be provided with fresh food. Five, chickens should be supplied with pure water. Six, balanced food should be given to the chickens. Seven, arrangements should be made to keep the poultry bed dry. Eight, poultry excreta should be preserved at a distance from the farm. If any disease breaks out in the poultry farm, a veterinarian should be contacted without getting panicked and the following steps should be taken. Number one, isolate the sick fowl and keep it under observation. Two, arrange pathological test of the faces and urine if required. Three, in case of severe viral disease, all the chickens must be destroyed. Four, dead bird must be put deep in the ground. Five, infected chicken should be sold out in the market. Six, treatment should be provided on advice of the veterinarian. Okay, my dear students, these two uh, cultivation or production is too much important for us, that is climbing fish and chicken, that is poultry for uh, production. And I hope that you will read very well and you must submit SW and you must submit uh, the assignments which you not yet submitted. Okay, stay well, stay safe. Assalamu alaikum.